Hi, I'm Tiffany Chow and I am from New York in the United States of America. Today I'm going to be presenting original research regarding the novel fly RNAi enrichment tool entitled Tissue Preferred Expression Analysis for Drosophila. To introduce, a lot of new genetic data has emerged in recent years, and this is mostly stemming from initiatives such as the Human Genome Project and modern sequencing technologies such as RNA-seq. This creates a problem being that it's now very difficult to associate all of these new genes and their respective expression levels with diseases and life functions. The solution to this is gene set enrichment analysis, and this involves the computation and comparison of the expressions of genes in multiple biological states. So this could be pre, pre or post COVID-19 infection. Gene set enrichment analysis can be developed in wet lab procedures. However, there is currently new technology databases and tools being developed that allow users to conduct gene set enrichment analysis virtually online. Drosophila and melanogaster are a very popular model organism for scientists studying the human genome. And this is because Drosophila reproduces in very large numbers with a very short life cycle, and it's very inexpensive, which allows for a great multiplicity within studies. Drosophila also reproduces with external embryos, allowing for very easy and convenient gene editing. The Drosophila RNAi Screening Center, otherwise known as the DRSC, was actually founded to study Drosophila specifically. The DRSC tracks RNAi screening reagents for Drosophila, as well as RNAi screening results. The DRSC it has a database called the Fly RNAi Database, and this database has a variety of tools and resources for scientists studying, studying Drosophila melanogaster con to conduct research as well as research planning. The Fly RNAi Database is actually currently developing a novel gene set enrichment tool tailored to Drosophila, and this tool will pull data from all of these different sources, and this will generate a final outcome that is much more efficient and capable than any others of its kind. So these are a variety of other characteristics of this specific gene set enrichment tool, which allow the output to be so much more comprehensive than any others of its kind. To review some literature in 2002, Jennings et al. discovered Drosophila melanogaster as an ideal model organism for humans for the reasons aforementioned. In 2003, Mutha et al. created gene set enrichment analysis, and then in 2006, Flockhart et al. founded the DRSC fly RNAi database. In 2007, Huang et al. created David, otherwise known as the De Database for Annotation, Visualization, and, Integra and Integrated Discovery, which is a very popular bioinformatics tool and database for analyzing large gene lists. And this has previously been used for gene set enrichment analysis for Drosophila and other organisms. In 2011, Flockhart et al. created DIOPT, otherwise known as the Fly RNAi DRSC Integrative Orthologic Prediction Tool. As its name might suggest, it is a tool from the DRSC Fly RNAi database, and this allows a user to find orthologic pairs among different organisms. DIOPT actually found that Drosophila shares many orthologic pairs with humans, which means that it shares a lot of genes derived from a common ancestor. This promotes the effectiveness and the accuracy of Drosophila as a model organism for humans. Finally, in 2016, Paramount et al. discovered that studies using Drosophila may focus on a variety of human diseases, and this again confirms its versatility as a model organism. The purpose of this experiment was to analyze and process bulk RNA sequencing data sets generated from various Drosophila tissues to produce a reliable tissue-preferred gene expression data package to be fed to the novel Fly RNAi's gene set enrichment tool. This mentor, throughout this process, my mentor devised the process of data analysis and verification, as well provided me with the initial data package. My mentor also defined the values for analytic variables. As a student, I reviewed and studied relevant literature in Python programming, and I also studied those initial data packages that she provided me with. I used these things to implement and design the in-house application, which would perform all of the data analysis for the study and produce the final gene candidate list. This software was called Nomalizer. I then verified the output with, by cross-referencing with two other platforms, being BioLitMine and Flybase. And finally, after confirmation of the accuracy of Nomalizer, I shared the source code on GitHub. Finally, I wrote a comprehensive manuscript introducing and detailing the work and methodology that will be described in this presentation. The data package was originally sourced from the Mod Encode Consortium, but then was retrieved from the Flybase database. This was presented in a matrix of RPKM showing expression of different genes and their respective samples. Samples were labeled with keywords such as this, and this sample shows a, a sample taken from the head of an adult female virgin fruit fly 20 days of age. So these keywords created an annotation file 
with tissue category definitions, which was coded into the in-house application called Numalizer that I mentioned before. Numalizer was originally coded in Python 3.7, but was also successfully tested on Python 3.8. PyCharm and Microsoft Visual Studio were the integrated development environments for this tool. Numalizer served to create nine tissue groups and assigned expression values to over 17,000 genes inputted and assigned them to their respective tissue groups based on this annotation file that I mentioned earlier. There were various threshold cutoffs coded into Numalizer. So this included an expression in one tissue group at least three times higher than other groups, a p-value of less than 0.05, and an RPKM of at least 10. So these tissue category or these threshold cutoffs allowed to eliminate all those insignificant genes and their respective expression levels for a more purified output. The data was then verified by cross-referencing with two other platforms. So the first of these platforms is BioLitMine, which is a literature mining service actually taken from the Fly RNAi database, which allows the user to mine through thousands of PubMed publications based on medical subject heading term. So an example of a medical subject heading term could be anatomy or astronomy. The numbers are output, including 3,500 total genes about, were entered for each tissue group, and a, an accurate result was denoted by a low mesh score and low p-values, as well as a high percentage of overlap genes denoting very high correlation. Accuracy was determined with very relevant mesh terms, and then top five mesh terms that were outputted by BioLitMine were used, were considered when analyzing the correlation. Flybase was the other platform with which the data was cross-referenced. Flybase was actually the origin of the data sets that were generated within the study, and Flybase is the primary repository for, uh, for genetic material concerning Drosophila. Five to ten preferentially expressed genes in each tissue group were entered because, unfortunately, it wasn't very feasible to input all of these genes individually into the database. The output shows the relative expressions of each gene in different tissues, and they're all scaled to the maximum expression level. If the outputs of Flybase agree with the output of Numalizer, the result is considered successful. Here is a summary of the Numalizer output. So the first column shows those nine tissue groups that were generated by that annotation file. And the second column further shows how 29 data sets that were entered were sorted into each of these groups. The third column kind of summarizes the first and second columns with the total number of samples within each group. The, la the fourth column shows the total number of genes found within these samples that surpassed all of those cutoff threshold values. And the final value shows the top RPKM, noting the expression level of the genes found, the top expression level of those genes found. So as, as you can see, these values are all very high. And for reference, the cutoff was only 10 RPKM, and these are all well above 1,000. Here is the BioLitMine output. So the first column again shows those nine groups you've seen. The second column shows the number one mesh term for all of these tissue groups. And keep in mind that the top five were considered. The third column shows the mesh category of these mesh terms. And mesh category for all of these is anatomy, which makes sense considering the tissue groups and the mesh, uh, the mesh terms. The fourth and fifth columns show the total genes versus total genes from input, respectively. And these two values combined can show a ratio, which can be a correlation value. The sixth column shows the mesh score, and the seventh column shows the non-aggregated p-value. And for both of these values, a lower value is preferred. And for reference, these are all very relatively very low values. Here is a fly-based output example. So this is just one example of almost 100 genes that we actually ended up inputting because it's unfortunately not feasible to show the outputs for all of those different genes. So this is a gene found by Numalizer to be maximally expressed in the digestive system. And actually inputting all of those genes individually was probably one of the most tiresome and uh, most difficult parts of this study, as well as coding Numalizer itself. So as you can see, all of these expression values are scaled to the maximum expression level. So this bottom bar right here shows the maximum expression level, and this bar correlates to this bar right here, which is actually the maximum expression level. So these four bars that are just very clearly show much higher expression than all the other ones are all samples taken from the digestive system of Drosophila within various stages of development, as you can see here on the side. So as you can see, Phi-base shows maximum expression level in the digestive system. And this is in agreement with the normalizer output. So this is an example of a successful output. So all of this data validation resulted in very high confidence in the normalizer's capabilities. BioLitMine had terms and output logistically consistent with tissue categories, as well as low mesh scores and p-values, which also showed very high correlation with normalizer. Flybase also had results overwhelmingly consistent with the normalizer output. 
all of these new databases will be published in the final gene set enrichment tool. Normalizer will also be used to readily produce many more gene lists in the future. Normalizer can also be applied to ge generic data analysis and other unrelated studies. And for this reason, the source code was published on GitHub. Normalizer's reliability and successful validation were as predicted in the original hypothesis prior to conducting any of the methodology within this study. To conclude, the code will be periodically updated in the future because it's very flexible to changes in methodology, in cutoff threshold values, in data sets. So it may later return expression tissues other than the top, for example, to show a much more comprehensive output. This very flexible utility is what allows it to be incorporated into other studies, as I mentioned earlier. Numalizer is now the very first publicly available application of its nature. It will also provide the primary data source for the gene set enrichment tool. This tool will be more efficient and comprehensive than any others of its kind, and it can be applied to a variety of creative hypotheses and studies for other scientists to use. So the applications and the impact of this tool are actually yet to be discovered because there are a variety of limitless ways that this can be applied. For example, Drosophila for example, this tool can actually have environmental implications. So for example, because Drosophila is a fruit fly and it's an insect in and of itself, it can also be a model organism for other insects. So for example, mosquitoes. There are currently efforts to find the gene for reproduction within mosquitoes based on Drosophila, so gene set enrichment can help with that. And this will allow us to help limit the pop the population of mosquitoes because they are very often considered a nuisance to humans. So that is just one very creative application that this tool can have, which has an impact on the environment. Finally, I would like to acknowledge my mentor, my science research instructor, and my family for supporting me throughout the process of this study. Thank you very much.